In this video, we want to look at a somewhat larger example that uses routers. And it turns out that a pretty good example case for needing to distribute work across for tasks across multiple workers is the Mandelbrot set. So I've actually started some code here because we don't need to take video time writing all of this that I put made a an object for a Mandelbrot actors because this is graphical it's going to extend the JFX app and I've declared some constants in here for the maximum number of counts to use for our Mandelbrot how big the image is the bounds on the image that we're going to create and then I've put in a little complex class that just does addition multiplication and magnitude because that's what we need in order to do the Mandelbrot calculations which are happening right here the standard z squared z equals z squared plus c inside of a loop calculating how many times it goes either until we get up to our max or the magnitude of the z value uh, gets to be four or larger I also have a little bit of code down here that sets up the stage puts in a title gives us a scene and I made a writable image that is put inside of an image view of and that is what is displayed so at this point this code can be run and we just get a blank window that has that writable image shown in it. So what we want to do here is we want to make a type of actor. I'm going to call it a line actor and the line actor is going to draw one line of a of the Mandelbrot set at least at a time. So every time it gets a message for this it's going to draw that. In order to draw, it needs to know about the pixel writer that it's going to draw to. And of course, this is an actor, so it needs to extend actor. That means that it needs to have a receive method. And we're going to make it so there is a case called line and for this line we're going to pass in the integer value of the row that it's on as well as the y value or the imaginary part of our complex number c that we're testing out here let's go ahead and make a case class for that for line and it's going to take a row which is an int and a y value that is a double Okay, how do we calculate a line? Well, uh, we need to have a for loop that's going to run through basically all of the uh, columns, all of our x values on there. So we'll say that j goes from 0 until image size. And we need to calculate the value of x from j, which is just going to be our x minimum value plus j times x max minus x min divided by image size. So that gives us our linear transformation that spans from x min to x max as j goes from 0 to image size. We are going to create a variable that stores the Mandel count for a complex value with X and Y in it. So this is going, this is where the real work is being done. The actor is calling this method here and it's going to do the calculation and give us back a value for that. And then we want to set that inside of our pixel writer. So we're going to set a color in our pixel writer located at the J value for X and the row value for Y. And then we're going to say if the count is equal to max count, I'm going to make things that are in the set be fully black. Else, I'm actually going to, I want to make this one a little bit prettier than I might have made, than I sometimes do with my Mandelbrot sets. Uh, so we're going to declare a variable called scale. And scale is going to be 10 times 
math dot square root of count two double divided by max uh, count. But it can only get up to one, so I'm going to say it's the minimum of that and 1.0. And then I can use that to give build a color that uses the scale for the red, no green, no blue, and completely opaque. Okay. I believe I need a closed parentheses there because all of this was inside of the set color. And so we have a nice actor that theoretically is able to draw lines into here. Uh, if I want to actually start using some actors, I need to make a system. So let's go ahead and let's create a new system. This will be an actor system. We'll just call it Mandel system. Uh, equals. And then we need to use that system down inside of here. We need to create an actor and have that actor actually go through and receive a bunch of messages for all the different rows in our image. This is where the router comes in because we want to draw a whole bunch of lines and basically we want to distribute the work for those lines across a bunch of different actors. So we're going to make a router. I'm going to call it router and I'm going to use a balancing pool. So we're going to use the system.actor of and what we pass into here is balancing pool and we tell it how many actors we want to spread this work across. I'm going to start off with just four and for many of your machines that's potentially a good number. Uh, it should be on, you know, possibly on the, the order of the number of cores you're willing to dedicate to doing this task. Turns out the balancing pool has a method called props and we can send it props for a, now remember our line actor takes a pixel writer so I can't use the square brackets and just say pixel writer. I need to say new uh, line actor and I'm going to pass it the image dot pixel writer. And we need to close off some parentheses there and then give this thing a name. I'll call it pool. Okay, let's see if that, I think that should be a dot instead of a comma. So we're making a balancing pool that uses four actors. Remember the difference between a pool and a group is that the pool actually creates its own sub-actors, the group does not. And it is going to create four of these line actors that are going to fill out our pixel writer. Okay. Now all we have left to do is have another loop that goes from zero until image size. I did not put a curly brace there. We need to calculate our y value. Once again, y min plus i times y max minus y min divided by image size. Once we have that y value, we can send the router a message. And once again, this is the way that routers work. We send them the message that we want to go to one of their sub actors. And we're going to tell the router, do the line I, Y. And that will come up to here. It'll go to one of the line actors. And because it's a balancing pool, it'll go to the one that uh, the router sees as being least busy. And so that's how it will wind up distributing the work. And we can run this and you can actually see the image being filled in. Oh, but then it crashes. Why did it crash? We have this issue that JavaFX only allows you to modify things in the GUI from inside of its main thread. And right now this pixel writer set color is happening off in the actors thread. And so we need to make it so that this does not happen there. To do that, we are going to call run later. 
so that after it's figured out the, the count, notice I did not put this inside of the run later. That The order of those two lines is really significant here because if, if I move this down, then I make it so that the one Scala FX thread is actually doing almost all the work. It will completely destroy any speed that we might have gotten. This is the line that we really care about. Uh, this is what's taking the processor time. And then we can just have it use that color to, to decide what to do uh, in here. So now if we run that again, you can kind of watch it fill in the Mandelbrot. Uh, I happen to be on a machine that has a few more cores, so we could probably get this to run a little bit faster. We're not gonna bother timing it here. But we could probably get it to run a little bit faster by giving it a few more actors to run across. And there you go. So this is the use of a router, in particular a balancing pool, to distribute work across multiple actors in a way that we can fairly easily configure.